color recipes. Mixing color recipes for oil and acrylic painting. Um, yeah, wow. This looks like it was printed in 1969. And you would think that a popular book like this written in 1969 would be like in everybody's, you know, studio. It's the first time I've ever seen it. Um, absolutely no value whatsoever. You no? can absolutely just... Yeah, so what they do, what you see in here, they have, you know, color charts here, okay? Now, the beauty, the, the real secret behind color charts is for you to make color charts. Um, you know, this is just a color chart thing, and, you know, yeah, it's, it's great. The problem, the problem with this is that, um, you know, they have, like, every color chart in your world, in the world, and some of the colors you don't use, and some of the colors you shouldn't be using, and it gets really, really confusing in, in the end. Um, what I would recommend more than doing like buying a color chart like this is to make a color chart of the actual colors that you that you use on a regular basis, and then work through them with all the different colors. So like the variations that, that are actually practical. Like if you're not using raw sienna, why would you have a color chart for raw sienna if you, that's not a color that you use? If you're using cad yellow medium, that'd be a worthwhile color chart. Um, so you so you kind of have to watch out for a lot of this stuff, you know. The the thing that you have with learning to paint is like we're obsessed. We're obsessed with trying to learn and get more and more information and more and more information. And I have students that are like really awesome painters, and they spent a lot of their time looking for the holy grail. And they spent hours and hours and hours on the internet trying to get more information, more information, more information. And the secret to it is to unplug yourself from all that. Because when you learn how to paint, you know that yellow and blue make what color? Green. Green, Green. good. And red and uh, yellow make what color? Okay, so you know that. And you know kind of how to put paint on the canvas and you know how to add medium to it. You know, so that's basically it. Painting is really quite simple. So then is a process of practicing. So you do homework assignments, so you practice that, okay? And let's say you start getting very good at that, okay? That's, is that art or is it still like the creation of something? So a lot of these books will teach you how to do that. And I kind of pride myself not as an art teacher, because to me, that's kind of real uh, technical stuff. And a lot depends on, you know, where people want to go. I kind of look at myself as a coach. And so what I'd rather do, and that's why I always ask students, so what were you thinking? Okay, because I think art lies within that. It's that, it's, it's that communication of you communicating to the viewer something that fascinates you. And I think that when you start looking on the internet, uh, you start losing yourself. And so I have a lot of people who look on the internet and then they discover me, you know. And now I'm telling them to unplug their computer after they've done so. Um, the problem is, is that I get people that say, oh, I want to sign up for this workshop. And oh, I want to go and take from this artist. And oh, I want to go do this. And when I go to the, the, um, the conventions, at the plein air conventions, it's like there's a group of people that they go from workshop to workshop to workshop to workshop. One artist uses bright colors. One artist, you know, main thing is values. One artist is this. And they go on and on and on and on and on. And after five years, they haven't grown any because they haven't stopped for one minute to apply themselves to anything. You know, and I think when you get to that point, you have to go, whoa, wait a minute. And that's why I think having a mentor over a teacher is better. Because when you go for a three-day workshop, what are they going to do? They're going to say, this is how I do it. So I use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That's how I make my grays. This is how I do it. And then you go to another workshop and they go, oh, no, don't ever use ultramarine blue. That's bad. Use cobalt blue instead. They don't tell you why, but that's what they do use. And don't use burnt sienna, use transparent red oxide. Nobody uses burnt sienna anymore, but you're going, but the last teacher just told me to use burnt sienna. 
you know. And then you go online, and then you have these people that go, oh no, don't use burnt sienna at all. In fact, don't even squeeze brown out on your canvas because you're going to get muddy. And then you're like going, oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> and so I need to go take another workshop. So you go down and you, you know, and then somebody says, oh no, I'm a colorist. Another person, and you're going, I don't know, maybe I should be a colorist. Another person says, no, I want to emphasize like, like the traumatic part of life's tortures and, and struggles. And you're going, I'm not that deep. You know? <laughs> and so you take another workshop and you find yourself, so you, you're just constantly like on this, this quest. You're like trying to find the promised land and you, you go for years and you never really get anywhere. And I think the problem with art in general is to unplug yourself from all that. I think the internet's wonderful. It's great. It gets your name out there. People can discover you. Um, but it also does a disservice because just when you think you've learned something, somebody's out there with something different and fresh and unique, and you think, oh wait, maybe I need to switch. Maybe that's the new fad. Maybe that's a new thing. And so maybe, you know, plain air. It's like a couple years ago, you mentioned plain air painting, and they're going, huh? You know, and now everybody's running out, painting outdoors, you know. It's frightening. It's scary. You're having all these, these people out there doing that, you know. Um, it's it's, it's what, what seems natural for you. And a lot of people, when I started plain air painting, they go, should I go out and plain air paint? And I say, well, it depends. Do you like hanging out in cold weather? Do you like sitting outside and having bugs? You know, do you find yourself ever like lounging around in the sun for hours baking at 120 degrees? I mean, do you like going outdoors? And they're like, no. And I go, well, why do you want to paint? Play? Because they said so on the computer. Everybody's doing it. I need to do it too. And I go, well, if you don't like to paint outdoors, then if you don't like to be outdoors, don't paint outdoors. You know, what do you like? What do you like? Who are you? And I was having a conversation with one of my my uh, students that I coach. And we're at this phase right now. It's like, you know, and a lot of people are like saying, how can you coach online? I mean, how do you teach anything? And it's real interesting because it's very intimate because I sit and stare at my phone and it's black, it's just their phone number and sit in front of me and I listen. And I look for where they're at. And some of the students, I say, you need to unplug yourself. You need to get back to who you are and not what you're going to do. And you need to discover that inner voice. Because if you're going, to, it's different when you're pursuing to be a, a painter than if you're going to be an artist. And these books are great in the beginning stages. But the reality is, is that you really only need red, yellow, and blue, a light color, a dark color, you know, temperatures, warm and cool. You just need very few things because it's kind of like writing a letter with multi-colored um, pens. It's like, yeah, it could be kind of pretty and make it look like a rainbow, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't change the content any. So just because you introduced, you know, a, a flashy color or, or something on your palette or something new that you discover out this isn't going to change the, the, the overall theme of the painting. What's really important is to develop yourself as an artist. So when you look at artists, artists uh, painting an artist, uh, artist is like autobiographical. And so I have students in my classes, they're painting, you know, wildlife paintings and they've never seen an animal before in wildlife. You know, the closest thing they're used to seeing is their husband before they jump into the shower. Uh, you know, it's like, that's as wild as that they get. And then, and then they wonder, you know, and, and they live in the cities, you know, they, they, they don't. So probably what's more in tune with them is something that's more, I mean, you could find art. I mean, you could find art right in this room. Um, you just have to kind of be aware to notice it. And I think part of being a painter is having that sensitivity. And some of you are starting to get to the point where you're asking yourself, so who I am as an artist? I mean, you've taken lessons long enough. And this is where I come in as a coach and I ask myself, Okay, do I step back, you know, and let them grow, or do I coach them to the next level? And oftentimes the sign of a good coach is just to step back and let them 
find themselves, you know. And so they'll say, so what do you think? And I go, I don't know, what do you think? You know, what is, what is in that for you? Um, I have students that are so frantically trying to, you know, paint. Just paint, 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 paint. That they don't even stop to breathe for a second and ask themselves, so what is this? Like you have a model coming up, you know. And so everybody's going to rush in there. The model's going to set up and you're going to go like, I've got two and a half hours. They're like, Ugh, frantically like, draw what's in front of them and then leave again. And if you had a following week, you'd have another model and they'd go in and they would draw and they'd end up with exactly the same model. But yet they as artists are two different people the following, you know, from week to week. And so, and there is no connection between them, their ideas, their feelings, their observations, their beliefs, and the artwork that they produce. It's a disconnect. And we spend a lot of time in classes painting beautiful calendar pictures about other people's experiences. They're not our experiences, they're other people's. And there's a disgenuine feeling that you have with your work, that you're just producing work, you know, copies of photographs of other people's experiences. And yet, as an artist, one of the wonderful things is that, you know, as, you know, sit and think about painting your mother and being with her. You know, there are people in this world that can't recall the color of their mother's eyes because they've never really stopped to take a look at them. Their parents have passed away. They don't even recall what color their mother's eye are because they haven't spent any time being with them. One of my coaches, I said, go to drawing class and don't draw at all. <laughs> so what do you do? Nothing. Unless something hits you. That's true. That's the problem. You just sit there. Just sit there. You know, it's strange for the model who's sitting there naked. You know. <laughs> Till something hits. But you know, we're so you know, when we go outdoors to paint, I, I watch, you know, like at the convention, it's like, oh my god, seven hundred artists, you can imagine. Okay, ready, step, three o'clock, go. And I'm like all these artists are going onto the beach, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon. Not the best time to go, but that's the time we go. And all of a sudden it's like frantic. Like just, you know, and everybody's like busy, busy, busy. And I'm like going, wait, the ocean's not going anywhere. The mountains are not going anywhere. Take a breather. Ask yourself, so what is it about this that, that hits me? Let the waves run for a while. Be present. We're so unpresent. Most of you have to have noise continuously. Even my classroom, it's almost a, a, uh, like, a like a weird moment when it gets quiet. You know, it's almost like when it gets quiet, I kind of sit and wait for the one person who can't stand it anymore. <laughs> they have to break that silence because they're so uncomfortable. They get into their car and they turn on their stereo. They go home, they turn on their TV. When they got a free moment, they go onto Facebook. They sit and they observe and they watch and they judge and they look at how other people are better than they are and they feel like they're desperate. And so they go and sign up for an art class and they go, I need to get better, you know? And it's like, no, you don't. Nobody wants you to get better. You just need to be, because that's what's going to turn you to be an artist. And everybody's like, well, how do you develop your style? If you're busy trying to develop your spot style, you're not developing a style. You're developing a way to paint and kind of copying somebody else's technique. How do you develop a style is just be yourself and put paint on the way you see it. And piece by piece by piece, your style will happen because you happen. You happen to show up. It's not a forced thing. It's not something that you can control. It's the decisions that you make, the things that you leave out, the things that you put on. It's like playing a piece of music. You know, you can have the same person play Rachmaninoff over and over and over again. But every time they, somebody plays it, they put something into it that's part of themselves. They're listening to what they're doing. They're absolutely present. 
You know, the great thing about playing music is that it's, you're listening to yourself. You're being with yourself. But in painting, we're being with the canvas and we're talking to somebody else or watching television. And it's almost like this is a byproduct of time that we're spending instead of just being by yourself. And a lot of people don't even give themselves the permission to do the homework assignment. Why do I give the homework assignment? To give you an excuse to stop for a minute, pull out some fortune cookies, put them on a plate, and be with it for a while. And for some of you, that's very, very uncomfortable. You know? Oftentimes when I hear people go, I didn't have time to do the homework assignment, I'm like going, is it that you don't have time or you're just afraid of being by yourself for a couple of hours? You know? We're so plugged in. And that we're so influenced by everyone else. I mean, I'm, I, I'm guilty of this too. I mean, I go online, and especially, you know, here I have uh, 20 students in this room. And it's like every one of you is influencing me. And I'm influencing you. And I'm like having these conversations and I don't let any of you paint anything like I paint. So I'm constantly like, and then I look at it and I see somebody paint and I go, wow, that's really great. I need to go home and do some of that. <laughs> you know? And then somebody else will come along and go, well, forget that. Wow, look what she's doing. That's really awesome. I think I should be painting fortune cookies the rest of my life. And then I'll give a new homework assignment and all of a sudden it's like, and then it's not the things at all. What does he mean? Don't paint that and then don't paint that, you know? And it's like, because it's kind of like your observation, your, your judgment. And then a lot of you actually go home and do the homework assignments trying to please me. And that's the least thing that I'm looking for. Because I don't really care how you paint it. I just want to see whether or not you got the idea. Something comes across. Some observation, something. And you know when that's authentic. Because when you do the homework assignment and you do it and you kind of like, Okay, a few more strokes and I'm done. You're not authentic at all. When you're authentic is that all of a sudden you're there and it's dark and it's two in the morning and it's freezing. You forgot to turn on the heater. And all of a sudden you go, oh, you wake up out of this, this dream. And you go, oh my God, everybody's in bed. It's two o'clock in the morning and my feet are frozen to the floor. And you were totally unaware of it. That's when you transcend um, getting a project done and being part of the project. Students who do the homework assignment every week constantly get better and better and better. Why? One reason, few of you that do the homework assignments here and there are doing it to fulfill whatever agenda you may have. Students that do it continuously stop worrying about what I'm going to say about it, stop judging it, stop trying to get it right, and they start looking at their subject matter and finding something about it that they find fascinating. And when you start working in that space, time is gone, you know, and you just create. And in that creation, there's an authenticity that comes through. And if you can plug into that, your own observations, you will create original work. You won't create original work if you go by color chips and recipes. You know, like this word recipe is absolutely the kiss of death for an artist. Kiss of death. Because you're no longer looking at the subject matter. You're trying to plug the subject matter into something, a technique of some kind. So you really need to watch out for these books. And watch out for a lot of the stuff you watch online. And I'm guilty of that. I'm absolutely guilty. I sit there and I watch it because, you know, and I go, no, I'm not going to go there. You know how it is all of a sudden you go, ooh, that's a pretty painting. Who painted that? And then you're uh, Googling that person yeah. and then before you know it, a whole day goes by. Mm -hmm. It's like you go, oh my. If you applied yourself that well to your paintings, you would be a master painter. But if you're constantly going and looking for new subject matter, new ways of painting, new artists, this and this, and then try to figure out how they did it, your mind goes Poof. Painting is autobiographical. It's about your life. So I would suggest unplug everything. It's good to have a group of artists that you work with, that you get feedback in, it's good to have a coach that you, tr you trust, but unplug all of the stimulus that you have around you and be present 
to every moment. Like one of my students says, she's just waiting to exhale. You know? And that's where we're at right now. I don't know. It could be a, she could be there for three months in that space. She could be in three weeks. I don't know. But the thing is, it's really awesome when you see that happening. That's when you become authentic. Mm -hmm.